Welcome back to Nuclear News. I'm switching up the background today so you don't think I'm in a Eastern Europe prison like I guess my last background indicated to some of you. So let's go through the news. Let's go through what's going on in this space. First, let's talk about price action. First up, we have the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF down 0.46% year to date. We have the Sprott Uranium Juniors Miner ETF up 2.5%, still outperforming. And then we have the S&P 500 actually up 7.45%, right? Mainly driven by the tech and AI rally. So the market, Mr. Market, as Warren Buffett says, is going to do what it's going to do, whether it's rational or not. And so all a good investor can do is take advantage of and enjoy dips, understand the fundamentals, buy things on sale. When you go to the grocery store, you don't want to buy things that are marked up. You try to buy things on sale. Assets should be no different. And that's why we stay on top of the fundamentals of this space, right? Which over time prove themselves out. So first up, we have a report on domestic uranium production in the U.S. for the fourth quarter, 2023. Look at 2023. We are nowhere near producing enough uranium to meet massive demand in the U.S. or elsewhere, right? But this just speaks to how scarce this resource is. We've had centrists. We've had some domestic producers try to create uranium, but clearly it's been a massively pathetic showing and this speaks to how scarce this resource is at the same time goldman sachs boosts physical uranium trades amid soaring prices goldman sachs macquarie and some hedge funds have boosted physical trading and options trade in uranium amid soaring prices many countries look to increase nuclear power generation to meet their climate goals while reducing the need for fossil fuel exports just like what we've been talking about so big institutions are starting to understand finally what is going on in this space at the same time we see the wall of capital, which we've been talking about, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The tsunami rushing into the space, boosting demand for the resource that is incredibly scarce, as we showed in the first chart. Government seeks nuclear power investment worth $26 billion from Adani, Ariel, Tata Group, Vent, Vedanta. $26 billion from Indian company. Billions and billions of dollars rushing into this space as fast as possible, increasing the demand, making uranium scarcer and scarcer. Japan's Tohoku Electric aims to restart this reactor in September. Again, boosting demand, just an, just an indicator there. Then we have in Europe, EU industry calls for green shift help to rival China and US. Industry leaders are calling for lower energy costs and less red tape. What's less red tape gonna do? That's gonna boost massive investment in nuclear power. So industry begging the government to allow them to accelerate the nuclear renaissance. At the same time, South Korea is upping the ante on small modular reactor foundry business. The government has boosted 2024 budget on SMR development and exports ninefold versus 2023. How many industries can see a 9x growth in the underlying fundamentals? What does that do to the price action of the assets supplying the resource required to meet this 9x increase in demand, $49 billion investment in small modular reactors. These are the fundamentals of space. That's why short-term price action is practically meaningless when you understand how big this game is on a global scale. Boom! Nuclear fuel consultants UXC are reporting that a non-US utility has issued a request for proposals to uranium producers to supply 21 million pounds in a massive long-term contract with delivery starting in 2026 on out to 2039. This smart utility is trying to lock up a supply because they understand how scarce it is. What happens when more and more utilities try to do this? It's just rocket fuel for the price of uranium, period, right? So it's a flywheel. These utilities are getting FOMO. This is what's going on. This is massive. And again, prices have to catch up when you understand utilities just diving deep, trying to lock up massive supply. It's everything. France and Bulgaria to strengthen nuclear energy cooperation. French Minister Bruno Le Maire and Bulgaria's energy minister have signed a declaration of intent to establish bilateral cooperation in the field of nuclear energy, including all areas of nuclear construction programs, small modular reactors, and development of a European supply chain, right? This is the long-term story. The biggest, most powerful governments on the pl on planet Earth are investing as much as possible into the space. Investment contract supports 
U.S. Demonstration Reactor Progress. The U.S. Department of Energy and Kairos Energy signed a technology investment agreement to implement an advanced reactor demonstration program. We're still so early in this space. The supply crunch can't be solved for a few decades. The technology is getting more and more revolutionary. More and more money is flowing into the space. We'll end on this. BHP, a massive mining giant, considers nuclear-powered cargo ships. This is how early we are. And so the best investors understand the long-term game and they pick up assets while they are on sale. Obviously not investment advice, but so far it seems to be working out pretty well for the people with the long-term vision and the nerves of steel. So we'll just continue staying on top of this market. Thank you for watching.